Hello, I'm Julie Haymaker, and today we're going to learn how to create this cute little um, altered bottle. This little mercury glass one, this one is a little regular one. And we're going to put these little cute shrink it stoppers on here. So I'm going to go through what we need. I do sell a little kit on my site at juliehaymaker.com, and it comes with the little heart and three little pre-shrunk shrinkets and a little mercury glass um, bottle, and then the findings and the beads and the ribbon that you need. But you can, um, you know, you can create these without the kit. So either way, the kit just makes it easy. And then what I'm going to be showing you today is colored pencils on it, pastels. I use Prismacolor New Pastels, so just a firmer pastel, but they're an art pastel. You can use any kind of pastels you want, or you can just use colored pencils. Then we're going to learn how to use some stencils, background stencils on it, with um, a pigment, which is a permanent um, ink. In white and dabbing those on. We'll be shrinking down using the shrink it beads, the white one which is a domed mold and the pink one which is the bezel mold and this is all sold at the website and that's in the credits. The website is Julie Haymaker at I mean juliehaymaker.com and then you need a heat gun. Uh, this is a craft heat gun. So and scrap paper and I like a little sandpaper to rub my pastels on. So I think that's it. Let's get started. So I've got my scrap paper and my pastels and my shrink plastic. And that's going to be the first thing I'm going to do is put pastels on them. So this is just a um, 1200 grit. I get this at a, like at Home Depot or Lowe's or, or Ace Hardware. And it's just a fine grit sandpaper so that I can rub um, my color choices down. And we're doing this in a, an ocean theme because our little charms are little um, ocean theme charms. And I just put this uh, color that I'm going to use on here. It gives me a nice selection to blend. And the first one I'm going to do is the little heart bead. And the yeah. pastel will only adhere to um, chalky surfaces or the sanded side of this. So this is the shiny side and this is the sanded side. I'm going to do an ombre effect. So I'm going to start dark up here. I'm just rubbing that into the surface. Blue-green here, rubbing it into the surface, and green down here. And then I'm just rubbing it really firmly in, and if I get it really and firmly embedded, I don't worry about it needing uh, a spray seal on it, such as workable fixative um, or any kind of sp for a spray seal, because it once it shrinks, it'll kind of embed into the plastic. So I'm really rubbing that into the texture of the sanded. So I'm going to set that aside, flip my scrap paper over, and then start with my big guy. Put blue in the center. Sanded side. Green tips. Rubbing it in. Moving over here to make sure that I can see that I've got that on there. And then juliehaymaker.com. <laughs> I just found that on the scrap. Sanded side. Going to come over here with blue tips, bluer tips, because I did this one with green tips. And aqua in the center. And then the last one, I'm just going to put a little green in the center and nothing else. Just let it go out to be transparent. So that's the pastel. 
So next I'm going to use stencils and ink to create a, a white pattern on, on the beads. So this is you when you do ink on um, shrink plastic, you want to use a permanent ink, uh, a pigment, permanent. Those are some anything that says permanent, waterproof, that type of thing. So pigment is usually another term for permanent. And this is my white pad, and I always double check to see if I've got enough ink on there. And if I don't then I refill it and I carry this also on my site where I carry the this because this is a, a go-to for me I use this a lot and I sell it with the pad and then the refiller and I also sell the daubers too these so you can use any kind of sponge dauber that you want these are the ones by Ranger that have the little peel off sponge so I'm going to use this pattern stencil and I'm going to line it up at least so that that's so it's centered and I'm going to just pounce until I get the coverage that I like. And I'm doing this right over the top of the pastel. So that is still on the sanded side. And we can see that I've got coloration here. Now, I can see that that's pretty dry, but um, I will take and burnish off any excess so that I don't have wet ink. Um, when I go to, uh, to shrink it. Now let's take some of these other background pattern stamps. I think I'm going to add more ink refill to my pad. Let that soak in. And then I'm going to make sure that I don't have too much of a juicy amount on my dauber. I've got a lot more pigment on there. But when you're using a dabbing technique like this, it, it takes up a little bit more ink. So I've got this nice little wavy pattern on here. And I, between inking it, I'm going to wipe up the excess. And then I'm going to move it so that I'm going to do pattern on pattern. And this will create kind of a wavy crosshatch pattern. Whoops. So I got this nice little crosshatch pattern with that pattern, I, with this stamp or this stencil. So we're going to continue. I have this pattern that I could use, or I have this one here. And I've chosen to use this kind of diamond pattern. And I hate to keep saying this, but I do. these are available on my site as long as I have them in stock. Now, I won't go back over that one. I'm just going to leave that as is. And... I've got three ready to go. I'm not going to put any white on that one. It's it's really tiny. So that's adding the, using the stencils and the inks over the pastels. Next, I'm going to show you how I'm going to add detail of colored pencil. So let's start with this heart. I'm just reinforcing um, 
areas are uh, using the pattern that I have on this um, that the stencil created and adding to it. There. And let's see, I might just come in with little dots here. And I'm going to outline this bead. So I'm burnishing my edge of my bead so I get a nice broad tip so that it makes it easy to come around here with an outline. Now, these techniques I'm showing you are just a combination of mediums. And that's what's fun with the shrink. It's just taking your different mediums and combining them together. But any of these techniques could be used all by themselves, like just colored pencil, which you see me do quite often if you've watched my videos. On this one here, all I'm going to do is outline it. And as I had talked about the pastels, I really rubbed them into the surface of the shrink plastic. And I also knew that I was going to go over them with pigment, with the ink. So I didn't worry about sealing them, but I did talk about if you do want to seal any of your shrink plastic, I've never really had an issue with it. I've, it always kind of seems that the... Um, mediums I'm using embed into it but use a workable fixative is really nice or if you're finished with your and you don't want to add more workable fixable fixative is so that you can spray a layer of design and then keep building up and working on it and then spray between your layers sealing your layers underneath so on this one here I can see that there that it maybe needs a little still a little more blotting you don't, inks, these inks aren't really made for non-porous surfaces, and so blotting is really important to make permanent ink work. Blotting is the whole trick to make the inks work on a non-porous surface. And I have noticed here on this bead that, so I'm grabbing my scissors, that one of the edges is cut off. So I'm going to have take all my little petals, although I love them on there, I'm going to have it match. There. That's how you save a bead. Let's go in. Now, what color are we going to use? We've used these colors. We're going to use this on the border. Nice broad tip. Really keep that burnished. Okay, now I'm down to my very last little tiny one. I'm going to get a nice clean palette for that. And I'm going to, going to outline him too. Outline him in the green. And he just had, or this little bead just had the halo of pastel green on it. So I guess I'm just kind of creating a graphic line when I outline to complement that shaded uh, technique. 
create a nice texture of just a mono color. But I'm going to come in with all of these here <clears throat> and tie them together and use a <clears throat> spot of this nice ultramarine. Give myself some contrast. Notice how that dark color just really adds pop. So in here I'm just going to do it like this over, the, you know, with the patterns abstract and graphic in the background, but I'm just coming in with these. <clears throat> so this is just layering pattern on pattern and being very organic with it. I'll come in here with this lighter blue and add these little dots around here. And then little blue dots on this. So it's kind of a theme. Little blue dots. So we've got this nice contrast going on, and now I'm ready to shrink. First one I'm going to shrink down his little heart. I'm going to shrink him flat. I'm going to put him in a bowl so I'm not chasing him around, and then the heat will heat evenly and make sure that the flat it doesn't go wonky on me, that it retains its shape and just gets smaller. And I've got a little wooden block handy, which is a little scrap wood block, that I'll lay on it once it's shrunk to make sure it is flat. So it's done. It's kind of flattened out and stopped moving on its, you know, own, it's not moving by shrinking anymore. Just the wind blowing it. And then I kept it flat and I've got this really pretty um, little heartbeat. Now we're going to shrink the other beads. And we're going to be using the bezel bead and the dome bead. I'm going to use the dome bead first. I'm going to be shrinking this guy, pop his little pop his little hole out that's punched but still got a little shrink it in it. There. And I can put the frosted or the shiny down. So whatever I see up here on the top of the surface will be inside the bowl of the bead. You'll see. So I'm gonna do shiny here. So I'm going to see shiny in the inside of the bowl of the beak. That shrunk fast. Um, with the little domed mold, you have a choice of either tip. This one here will ensure that it's perfectly round, like a bowl. There we go. We have frosted on this side. And we have shiny when we look down in it. Now we're going to move over to the medium bead. And I'm going to put frosted up. So I'll see frosted in the bowl. Then moving. Coming down here. And for this, 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005. This is so small, it cooled very fast. Shrunk and cooled very fast. And there we have it. There's the difference, frosted and shiny. Then shiny out here and frosted out here. <clears throat> and now we're going to use the fluted spacer bead mold. And I'm going to put shiny up. I mean the bezel mold. Pink is the bezel mold. And 
and with these guys, they can sometimes, um, like we had a little crack happen right there. And I just put it together, let it kind of self-heal. And it's slumped in the mold. It's still warm, so I can still form it. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005. And there we have it. The opening did show a little bit there still, so I think I'll shrink it, heat it again. A little crack there. So I'm warming it back up, and I'm going to once again bring those together and just gently put this on there. And I, I'm glad that that happened while I'm shooting the video because these little beads are really wonderful to use, these really fine petal beads. But they sometimes can touch each other or, or have a little breakage there, and that's how you can repair it. There, I'm just helping it. We're still a little warm. And there we go. All better. So next we're going to be assembling. So I have my little bottle and my little shrinket. So I'm going to open up my kit. Got lots of fun stuff in it. Looks like it has a couple duplicates in it. First thing I'm going to do is my ribbon. So and my chain. Got this little chain here. You may have one whole section, a couple sections, and that's what we're going to hang our charms on. So the first thing I want to do is add that to it. And I want it in kind of a tapered um, drape. So two or three links here off to the side. Twirl this a little bit. Grab, count in three links and pull that through. And then I'm going to tie this in a double knot. Get it around the neck and then tie it again. I seem to be all thumbs. There we go. And then we have the chain right there and I can make adjustments to the chain. I'm going to cut these short and I am going to grab my pliers because we're going to add the chains. So I mean, not the, ch the charms. So here I am. I'm going to add my first charm here to this short little um, link. Open up that link. See, sir, this is an open link chain. I'm going to add that on there. And then I'm going to put my other two on this chain. This is obviously too long. I think I would like it about right there. So I'm going to take these links off. Open it up. Take the links off and add the little seahorse. And then let's see where we are. There we are. So I'm going to add the little seashell about on this link or this link. I'm going to put it on this one right here. And there we go. Okay, we've got that part done. And now we have all of our beads we want to play, we can play with. First thing I'm going to do is open up this Tim Holtz. This is a memo pen. 
tin. And these are steel and they get can be ornery about opening up. They're like trying to open up a jump ring. You know, the jump rings that are double. So what I'm doing is Gonna look and see where I am with this. Open it up as much as I can and slip my little heart bead, whoops, heart bead in there. It is a little tough, it's kind of tough to do. Got him in, then I can bring him up like so. Okay, so just do your best with that one. And then this is where we're going to stack our beads. So I'm going to start small up here. And some of these in your kit may not, you know, may not fit. Let's see. This one here, we don't have that as an option, although it's in your kit. And I'm going to talk about options in a minute. Um, we're going to stack this and, and see where we are. Try that. Let's put each kit also, each of these little kits that I make up, they, each one may be a little bit different. Different selection so that you can play. Okay. I think I want that bigger. And this seems to be, it's real purple down there, but when I put it on here, it came out to be really pink. So I'm going to switch to the green one. And I'm going to try this one next. See what I think of that. That's pretty cute. I'm going to put this on. And then I know that if I that I put this, I, it's, I'm not going to have enough room. Um, so that's why you need to play. Like if I had started smaller here. Let's see if I had just done... Um, something like so. Oh, let's just do this. Where's our little guy? Where is he? Could do something like that. Go back to the green. Then a smaller choice here. And then this allows us probably to barely get that on there, but we're still kind of tight. So we do this. And that, okay? And then how about this? And let's see where we are there. That's too tight, so come in here. And that's the beauty of this is being able to play That looks cute. That's pretty cute. And if I want to use this big one, then I think I've got room for it. Depends on if I like it. And I think it's, you know, maybe I think it's too big. Let's try this one. Downsize. I like that one better. And then I could do another sequin if I wanted. Or I could do the little gear bead. I'll try the little sequin. So I'm just, what I'm showing here is you have options. Then I'm going to put my filigree on and just come in here and find the center of this and press it all down. And I've got this darling, whoops, zip daisy. Look what I forgot to do. I forgot to, that we had the option of this fun guy on there. There. Look how pretty that is underneath. There, lovely, and there we are. So it's showing you lots of different options and then the fun that you can just play by taking them on and off and seeing which way you like it. And there we go. So thanks for joining me. Oh, I had forgotten that I had wanted to show you an option 
of if you want to use a different type of pin and you want to stack higher, you can use a head pin. That this is a ball tip one. Or you can, if you want to, it's still a short stack, but you don't want to have a heart on it, you can use a quilting pin. So let's just first show a tall stack. So we have our little beads, and that's when these little tiny beads that won't fit in the memo pen, you can use them for a tall stack. We're going to do something like this, and we, we have a lot more options when we do it this way. Um, I think I'm going to put this one on. And going up in size, um, there I go. Here, put my large blue bead on. Maybe add a little filigree in there. Let's add, we didn't add this little, if you happen to have a little rhinestone bead in there, we can add something like so. Come on down. And we've got this kind of stack going. And, um, Then we've got the option of doing a longer stack. And then what you do, there's already a little hole in this from the memo pen. There's a little pilot hole. So you want to have a little pilot hole. Press it down in here, and then you'll want to cut your tail off. These are titanium scissors so I can cut my tail off. And there I have that option where I can go really long. Now let's show shorter. But with no heart. We've got something like that going. Probably not going to use the big one on this because we're doing a short stack. Let's put something, give us something pretty in there between those two. There, that adds a little bit of, of spice. There, and then something like so, like so. down to a shorter one, or this one would be pretty to use. Do we have to keep this as a short stack? There, and we still have room to come through and put it in the cork. You can do it with the filigree or not. Let me go ahead and add that filigree. The nice thing about these filigree pieces is they're so thin. Press that down and there you've got a shorter stack without a heart. Okay, and lastly, once again, thanks for joining me. First one I'm going to shrink down his little heart. I'm going to shrink him flat. I'm going to put him in a bowl so I'm not chasing him around. And then the heat will heat evenly and make sure that the flats, it doesn't go wonky on me. That it retains its shape and just gets smaller. And I've got a little wooden block handy, which is a little scrap wood block, that I'll lay on it once it's shrunk to make sure it is flat.
so it's done. It's kind of flattened out and stopped moving on its, you know, on a, it's not moving by shrinking anymore. Just the wind blowing it. And then I kept it flat and I've got this really pretty um, little heart bead. Now we're going to shrink the other beads and we're going to be using the bezel bead and the dome bead. I'm going to use the dome bead first. I'm going to be shrinking this guy, pop his little pop his little hole out that's punched but still got a little shrink it in it. There. And I can put the frosted or the shiny down. So whatever I see up here on the top of the surface will be inside the bowl of the bead. You'll see. So I'm going to do shiny here. So I'm going to see shiny in the inside of the bowl of the bead. That shrunk fast. Um, with the little domed mold, you have a choice of either tip. This one here will ensure that it's perfectly round, like a bowl. There we go, we have frosted on this side, and we have shiny when we look down in it. Now we're going to move over to the medium bead, and I'm gonna put frosted up, so I'll see frosted in the bowl. Then moving, coming down here, and for this 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005. This is so small it cooled very fast. Shrunk and cooled very fast. And there we have it. There's the difference, frosted and shiny. Then shiny out here and frosted out here. <clears throat> and now we're going to use the fluted spacer bead mold, and I'm gonna put shiny up. I mean the bezel mold, pink is the bezel mold. And with these guys, they can sometimes, um, like we had a little crack happen right there. And I just put it together, let it kind of self-heal. And it's slumped in the mold. It's still warm, so I can still form it. 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005. And there we have it. The opening did show a little bit there still, so I think I'll shrink it, heat it again. The little crack there. So I'm warming it back up, and I'm going to once again bring those together and just gently put this on there. And I'm glad that that happened while I'm shooting the video because these little beads are really wonderful to use, these really fine petal beads. But they sometimes can touch each other or, or have a little breakage there. And that's how you can repair it. There, I'm just helping it. We're still a little warm. And there we go. All better. So next we're going to be assembling. Oh, I had forgotten that I'd wanted to show you an option of if you want to use a different type of pin and you want to stack higher, you can use a head pin, that this is a ball tip one, or you can, if you want to, it's still a short stack, but you don't want to have a heart on it, you can use a quilting pin. So let's just first show a tall stack. So we have our little beads, and that's when these little tiny beads that won't fit in the memo pen 
you can use them for a tall stack. So we're going to do something like this. And we, we have a lot more options when we do it this way. Um, I think I'm going to put this one on. And going up in size. Um, there I go. Here, put my large blue bead on. Maybe add a little filigree in there. Let's add, we didn't add this. Little, If you happen to have a little rhinestone bead in there, we can add something like so. Come on down. And we've got this kind of stack going. And then um, we've got the option of doing a longer stack and then what you do there's already a little hole in this from the memo pen there's a little pilot hole so you want to have a little pilot hole press it down in here and then you'll want to cut your tail off these are titanium scissors so I can cut my tail off and there I have that option where I can go really long now let's show shorter but with no heart. We've got something like that going. Probably not going to use the big one on this because we're doing a short stack. Let's put something, give us something pretty in there between those two. There, that adds a little bit of, of spice there and then something like so like so down to a shorter one or this one would be pretty to use do we have to keep this as a short stack there and we still have room to come through and put it in the cork. You can do it with the filigree or not. Let me go ahead and add that filigree. The nice thing about these filigree pieces is they're so thin. Press that down and there you've got a shorter stack without a heart. Okay and lastly once again thanks for joining me. Oh, I had forgotten that I had wanted to show you an option of if you want to use a different type of pin and you want to stack higher, you can use a head pin. That this is a ball tip one. Or you can, if you want to, it's still a short stack, but you don't want to have a heart on it, you can use a quilting pin. So let's just first show... A tall stack. So we have our little beads and that's when these little tiny beads that won't fit in the memo pen you can use them for a tall stack. So we're going to do something like this and we, we have a lot more options when we do it this way um, I think I'm going to put this one on. And going up in size. Um, there I go. Here, put my large blue bead on. Maybe add 
little filigree in there. Let's add, we didn't add this little, if you happen to have a little rhinestone bead in there, we can add something like so. Come on down. And we've got this kind of stack going. And um, then we've got the option of doing a longer stack. And then what you do, there's already a little hole in this from the memo pen. There's a little pilot hole. So you want to have a little pilot hole. Press it down in here, and then you'll want to cut your tail off. These are titanium scissors so I can cut my tail off. And there I have that option where I can go really long. Now let's show shorter. but with no heart. We've got something like that going. Probably not going to use the big one on this because we're doing a short stack. Let's put something, give us something pretty in there between those two. There, that adds a little bit of, of spice. There, and then something like so, like so. Down to a shorter one, or this one would be pretty to use. Do we have to keep this as a short stack? There, and we still have room to come through and put it in the cork. You can do it with the filigree or not. Let me go ahead and add that filigree. The nice thing about these filigree pieces is they're so thin. Press that down and there you've got a shorter stack without a heart. Okay, and lastly, once again, thanks for joining me.